You might know I love assistants. I was one of the first people to see Siri uh, out of SRI Labs, and I've been playing with Q and uh, uh, Tempo and a whole bunch of different assistants, and uh, Google Now for sure. And also, I'm writing this book called Age of Context, which is all about context. And the two are mashing together right now in a very cool way. We're going to talk with an entrepreneur who is bringing to life Donna, <laughs> which is a new assistant. And it's the assistant I think Steve Jobs would have liked the best. Who are you? Uh, I'm Kevin Cheng. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Incredible Labs, and we make uh, an assistant named Donna. And tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I come from a, an engineering background, but quickly kind of moved into user experience and design before that was even a term, and did that for almost a decade at places like uh, I designed Yahoo Pipes, um, and I worked at a startup called Raptor. That's a video game social network. And then most recently, I was a product manager over at Twitter. Um, so I was leading the web team when we did the redesign new Twitter, um, and then running a product group that included search and trends and uh, what is now Discover. Um, and then after that, I, uh, I started, the, started Incredible Labs with a few friends. Very cool. So playing with, it, with uh, Donna, right away, um, you're in a very crowded space, right? And Q and Tempo and Sunrise, and I, I can't even name all of <laughs> the, uh, you know, uh, Maluba Lab and, uh, <laughs> and Google Now, right? Yeah. You, you're going to compete with Google, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's a very uh, crowded space. One thing that stood out right away was the design of it, the, mm -hmm. the fit and finish, adding things. T tell me a little bit about why that that's so much better on your product than other, other products. Sure, so, so I mean, and when it comes to the design, it's not even just the fit and finish and the, the look of it, um, but what we think about this space of assistance and productivity software in general is that it's not something that has to be boring or stark. Um, in fact, to us, um, assistance is a human type of thing, and we interviewed a lot of assistants um, and we start to understand uh, what makes a good assistant or what makes a great assistant. And what makes great assistants are people that come to you with information before you even realize that you need it. People that have personality and get to know you. Um, and so that's how we approach this. And that's also why uh, the product is named Donna. And in fact, Donna is named after a character from the West Wing yeah. uh, named Donna Moss, and she's a powerful assistant character who becomes chief of staff and um, really just gets a lot done and is really on the ball. And we felt like that was a good representation of what we were trying to recreate and give this feeling to everyone of having that peace of mind of having an assistant and getting doing things on your behalf so you don't need to worry about it. One thing, though, I, with these assistants, and particularly with these contextual assistants that are trying to look at what you've done in the past and try to guess what you're going to do next, right? That's what context is. Is uh, there still is always serendipity in our lives? Mm -hmm. You know, we think we're going to walk someplace, and then all of a sudden I have to drive a bunch of equipment there, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I have to change my plan from walking to driving. Yeah. And you did that really beautifully. What, just tell us about that use case of being able to switch back and forth between walking and driving. Um, sure. I mean, really, like, we, are, we are part of the user base. We want Donna to really help us. And uh, we know that we don't only get around by driving, especially living in San Francisco or New York or all sorts of places where sometimes I... I really sometimes walk, bike, or take transit, or drive. Um, and having that option to choose between these things and really say, like, this is how I'm getting places is really important. And it's sort of that balance of um, having, again, modeling after a real assistant. A real assistant may ask you, go, Robert, how are you getting to this meeting? And you'll, you'll be like, oh, I'm going to drive there. And that helps Donna help you. Uh, so we really do that kind of back and forth 
um, and spend a lot of time on that and not really force you to always be going to the app. And Donna comes to you as often as possible. Yeah. Tell me, let's back up a little bit and talk about what this thing is actually doing. Because it's sitting on top of your Apple calendar, which mm -hmm. could be hooked into what, Exchange calendar or Google calendar or, or other calendars. Yep. Is it looking at my email at all? Like the, uh, some of the contextual, contextual assistants are actually looking for the emails mm -hmm. that we mm -hmm. sent back and forth to set up this meeting, for instance. Right. So tell, me, tell me what it does underneath the, the covers. I so, guess. Um, so we're really focused on solving a few problems really well rather than trying to do a lot of things and then doing it all of them mediocrely because then you can't trust Donna. Yeah. So um, as you mentioned, there are a lot, of, a lot of competitors out there in the space now and they, do think, they will say things like, we do these 20 things and we do flights and we do email and all these things. And then like, um, more often than not, we've tried these out and they kind of fall flat or they're wrong so often that I'm doing more work. So Donna, she looks at calendar and looks at your location. And the thing we're focused on most right now is around getting to meetings, telling you uh, ahead of time when you need to leave to get to meetings, looking at traffic and how you're getting there, uh, looking at where you are, um, thinking about even where you're going to be coming to, an, going to a meeting from ahead of time. So that meeting tomorrow, you're gonna to be coming from home and it's gonna take this long, so you need to leave at this time from home. Um, so she tells you these things, um, she'll give you a push notification, uh, or she might even call you uh, like a real assistant would because push notifications are very noisy. Uh, and then uh, you'll know to leave. Um, another thing that she does is, so again, all around this use case of meetings and what I need there, um, instead of saying like, oh, there's a conference call, like imagine if you've got a real assistant, you wouldn't say, Donna, um, I think I have my conference call right now, could you dial me in? Uh, you would prefer Donna to say, hey Robert, your conference call is starting now, uh, are you ready? And the analog to that is Donna gives you a push notification saying your conference call is starting now and you just swipe and she dials you in. And we do that um, and we also do, do that with like WebEx or GoToMeeting or Skype. Just, she just opens the app and you're like, you're there. Um, and then weather was the other one where she uh, tells you not all the time, this is one of those things like Google Now, one of my pet peeves is uh, it's always telling me the weather. And I'm like, that's it's sort of like their default if they've got nothing else to show you. And I'm like, that's not really usually the most important thing for me. Yeah. As maybe it's because I live in San Francisco and it's mostly sunny. But what I care about are the anomalies. And, yeah. and what I care about, like you commute between uh, South Bay and here, and I'm sure you move around a lot for meetings, and the weather is very different in those places. So she looks at what the weather is going to be like at the time and place that you're going to be at. Well, there, there's another company called Newly that I've been talking to that does mm. micro weather. And here, like you said, in San Francisco, weather doesn't matter that much because it's either cloudy or it's sunny. <laughs> <laughs> it very rarely changes all that much, right? Yeah. Although it, that's when you don't expect rain because right. you, you're pretty much never used to having rain. And so I, I don't think about umbrellas. Whereas like when I lived, I'm from Vancouver, you know, it's the inverse. Uh, and so... Donna actually only telling you when it's going to rain is the most useful thing she can do. Not telling yeah. you weather all the time so it becomes noise. Well, it, 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 where I was going with Newly is he will tell, he, his system, his database, knows where the weather is changing minute by minute. Mm -hmm. And at, at South, South by Southwest, it actually proved useful because it started raining just for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. and. Um, th knowing that fact would really affect how you were going to get Uber cabs, for instance, because people were trapped all over the city right. in the rain, and they yeah. all of a sudden they wanted to call a cab and get right. and get a ride somewhere instead of walking there. Yeah, and they couldn't get a cab. So if you knew that the rain was going to go away in 20 minutes, that really affected your serendipity yeah. of what you were going to plan for the next two hours or something like that. I mean, a similar app to that is Dark Sky, right? And and we think of those types of apps as like perfect examples of uh, specific use cases. And we want Donna to do as many of those specific use cases as possible of being one step ahead. And we wanna make sure we do each one right though. So we, we're slowly adding 
uh, one step at a time. So Donna right now only shows you what the next three days. It doesn't. It, it really isn't quite a calendar replacement yet mm -hmm. because uh, uh, to replace my calendar, I need to be able to look at next year, for instance. So yep. I, I'm already booking out sp uh, speaking gigs for next next year. It's Absolutely. Crazy. Yeah. Um, I can't do that with Donna yet, right? It, uh, it, that's correct. But and tell me where you're thinking of. Yeah. So Donna. so you know back to the um, focusing on. Uh, specific use cases and doing those really well. Uh, we, we're looking at what matters to you in the immediate future um, and really focusing on that, um, which is you know, a hard decision to make because yeah. you, you do want to give everything right away, um, but that's, that's how we're starting out. But we already have ways ourselves in our version of Donna to see other days and we definitely want to do that uh, in the future. So when you start uh, talking about an, a real life assistant, I start thinking of really weird use cases. Um, I'd love to tell it, hey, I'm going to uh, Miami this week. Can you see if there's a cheap uh, upgrade for my flight seats, right? Mm -hmm. If I had a real life assistant, that's the kind of thing I'd be telling her. You know? yeah. Can you see if we can get a first class seat for less than $1,000? Know? Yeah, yeah. Because then I might, I might do that. But it's the last kind of last minute, and I'm starting to think about how enjo more enjoyable that might be than you mm -hmm. know, flying in coach, which is where I usually am. Um, can I, I can't yet do that with uh, Donna, can no, I? No, and, and like, there, there are different things like, um, task-oriented things that are like one-offs, uh, things like that, that's not really something that we're focusing on. Um, there's, we're really habitual cr creatures and there's so much uh, that, that we can deal with that's, uh, that's around your habits and yeah. all these little things that she can deal with on your behalf. So, you know, just back to the, the travel thing for a second. Um, we're, we're sitting here and let's say like you have a meeting coming up uh, after this and you might like start checking your time and being like, when do I have to leave yet? And you're not fully engaged and focused here. And then when it's time to leave, you open your calendar to see what the meeting is. Then you have to look at where it is and you open maps and then you get directions. And it's just, a, and you might be doing this while you're late and driving. Yeah. And so what we want to focus on are cases like that where there's all this junk that you don't really want to deal with. And you want the peace of mind of having an assistant who's, who you know like, I'm going to focus on you because Donna is going to tell me when it's time to go yeah. and when she tells me and when I'm ready, the directions are going to be right there with, with it, the notes are going to be right there with it, I don't have to jump between apps all over the place um, and if I'm really running late she might even just call me and tell me. Very cool. Let's say tomorrow uh, I'm going to have a uh, steak dinner with Rocky and then somebody else comes in and says, oh I don't eat meat, I, mm -hmm. I'd rather have um, you know, a vegetarian. We're going to have to switch our, our lunch plans. Is, mm -hmm. is there an easy way to do that? And do you hook in with other databases like Yelp or Foursquare to figure out what another alternative place to have a lunch meeting would be? There's a couple parts to, to answering that question. The first is you can easily from Donna say, actually, this meeting is somewhere else. And she'll autocomplete and figure out uh, where that thing is. That's not like suggesting places to you. Um, another part is that she starts to learn about you um, you know, we already know from, by needing to know where you are to tell you when to leave, and by combining location and calendar, uh, she starts to know uh, the habits, the places you like to go for lunch, whether you actually go to that gym meeting that you have, um, and things like that. And by doing so, uh, just like a real assistant starts to get to know you, she can tell you, oh, this is a, this is a place that you might want to have for lunch. Uh, this isn't something that we do right now, uh, but like the the data is already there for it. Yeah. How are, tell me about your company. How was it funded, or mm. and, and how many people are working there? Uh, so we are eleven, um, and we have a, a combination that's focused on. You know, you were talking at the beginning about the design aspect. We think that this is a, the pillars of making a product like this successful is not just technology, um, but it is that as well. So we have. A, Data engineering and design, and data and design are this, these pillars for our product. Um, we're funded by Coastal Ventures, yeah. um, as well as uh, a group of others, including Maynard Webb, um, Crunch Fund, BetaWorks. Um, so Very smart people. Uh, yeah, and they've they've all been fantastic. Yeah. And uh, I can see why you got got uh, Coastal. 
uh, to bite on this instead of some of the others. Yes, um, he's, he's been very excited about this. Where do, where do you think this space, for the book, you know, where does the space of context, where is it going? Are you going to get bought by Apple and then you're going to be the Siri sister? Is Donna going to be the Siri sister at Apple? And um, I think, I think there's, there's a lot of different ways this can go. I think that the fact that you're writing this book is very indicative of just like how broad the space is right now and how it's really applicable to everything. There are plenty of companies that will be interested in this sort of thing. And I'm not talking just for pur purposes of acquisition. Like that isn't specifically any kind of plan of ours. Uh, we want to build, we want everyone to have the feeling of having an assistant, um, however that happens. But a lot of people want that kind of service for people, whether it's Apple or Google or those usual players, but also like you think about service industry, um, hotels or American Express, all of these people want to provide this type of service to their customers. And I think that that kind of technology is going to be pretty ubiquitous probably in a few years. Yeah. Uh, lastly, uh, this is iPhone only right now? Or? For now, yes. Okay. Uh, we want to make sure that we focus on uh, one platform to get, get it right and then we can uh, go for Android. Soon I'm getting my Google Glass, so I'm going to have something on my face. And they, the code name for that was Wingman. So the, Sidekick, could, right? Well, it's Sidekick or Wingman. Yeah. I, Vic said it was Wingman, but uh, it's an assistant that's going right. to be on my face all day long. Are you thinking about how that's going to potentially change your potential market? I mean, absolutely. Any Google Glass is just one of these things and the most well-known, but I'm sure we're going to see some Kickstarter or you know Pebble watches. There's all sorts of ways to inform people of information, and this is why our design is not about just going to the app. It's so much more about coming to you, and how that happens is really how you consume information. Very cool. Where do I learn more about you and your and your product? Oh, um, our website is don.na. So Donna. D o n. Dot N A. Very cool, and you yeah. can download it from there. Uh, yes. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming in, and uh, it's going to be really interesting, interesting to watch you and your assistant. Yeah, so thanks so much I for love having space, us. So thank yeah. you for coming out. Thank you.